Assurance of eternal life. Visit Bible Discovery Center. Bible Discovery Center is an online community Bible school featuring inspired messages by dynamic presenters. Also, meet our amazing Bible instructor, coaches, who will engage you in in depth, interactive studies of the Word, who will answer your questions directly from the Bible. And prayer partners, ready to walk the journey of faith with you. Our coordinators, Coach K and Garrett Christie, are standing by to welcome you into this life changing event. Visit BibleDiscoveryCenter.com to learn more about virtual meetings, watch recordings, Complete our online Bible lessons or to register for our online community Bible school. Bible Discovery Center is an adjunct to local churches and ministries, meeting you where you are with the gospel. My name is Angela K. Pound. 
co-founder of Project Center. I want to invite you to learn and grow with us through our three community Bible schools. Visit BibleDiscoveryCenter.com and register today. Good evening, good morning, afternoon, wherever you are around the world. Um, I thank you for joining us. My name is Vivian Teal. I am your host for the day. And my co-host is Juanita, Coach Juanita. Um, I am we are so um, grateful to have you today. I would like to invite our Facebook and YouTube friends to join us on our Zoom platform at BibleDiscoveryCenter.com, where you can join us on our live on our live meeting by clicking the yellow button where it says join live meeting and click on there and that will take you to our live Zoom platform. We also would like to invite you to post your, your prayer request to either me or our prayer coaches so that we can pray um, over your prayer request. Uh, thank you for joining us, and we appreciate you joining us for today for our meeting. Um, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you for this day that you have given us. Bless us to be here. We pray, Lord, that you bless each and every one on this platform this evening, and we pray, Lord, for our speaker for the day, that you'll bless him and touch his lips and give him the words to, to preach today. And we thank you, Lord, for each and every one that will be tuning in or joining us pretty soon. And we pray, Lord, that you bless the airways, bless the technology, and bless each and every one that's on here right now. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I'm going to turn it over to our um, to my co-host, uh, Juanita, right now. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Juanita Staten. And it is my pleasure to be your co-host this evening. These are our announcements. Bible Discovery Centers offers free, there is hope Bible studies and free instructor coach training via Zoom or in person if possible. Please register at BibleDiscoveryCenter.com for either of these. The free Bible instructor slash coach training is offered on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And the free There Is Hope Bible study is live on Saturdays at 4 p.m. Today, May the 20th, is our last day. BDC also offers prayer coaches. There is free health information and free children activities on the BDC website. That's BibleDiscoveryCenter.com. If you're an SDA church, you have the opportunity to start a local BDC community Bible school. Please contact us at BibleDiscoveryCenter.com. I'd like to highlight BDC's mission and vision. Our mission, Bible Discovery Center endeavors to meet people where they are with the gospel. Our mission, a warm and friendly community Bible school with centers extending across the globe. And I'd like to just highlight a little bit about Bible Discovery Center. In 2020, Bible Discovery Center uh, began with two Bible workers, Angela K. Powell and Garrett Christie. They were determined not to allow COVID to hinder their work of sharing the gospel. Rather than stop, they decided to minister differently. As a result, Bible Discovery Centers was born in the spring of 2020. Bible Discovery Centers brings innovative evangelistic tools, branding, exposure, and a dedicated team of Bible coaches, instructors, trainers, strategic consultants, advisors, technical support, prayer support, and site coordinators to your local church to bolster your evangelistic efforts. 
Now that you better understand BDC's mission and vision, you're probably wondering how we will make this happen and how this can help your church achieve its evangelism and discipleship goals. Well, you can call or email us for more information. The number to call is 1-855-522-4253 or 618-791-4262. And if you want to send an email, please send it to grow at biblediscoverycenter.com. You can use either one of these methods to learn more about local Bible discovery centers or simple centers, the vehicle that brings BDC resources to your church or ministry, benefits of sponsoring a Bible discovery center, and the criteria and cost to operate a Bible discovery center. We'll walk you through the process of setting up your local Bible discovery center. And now we will have a song by Coach Catherine Phillips. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Every day they pass me by. I can see it. In their eyes, empty people fill with care, heading who knows where. On they go through private things, living fear to fear laughter highs and silent cries only Jesus hears people need the Lord people need the Lord at the end of broken dreams, he's the open door. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. When we, we realize People need the Lord. See, we are called to take his life into a world where wrong seems right. What could be a greater cause for sharing life with one who's lost through his love our hearts can feel all the grief they bear they must hear the words of life only we can share People need the Lord. People need the Lord. At the end of the broken dream, easy open door. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. When we we realize that we must give our life for peace, 
the Lord. Amen. Today our instructor is Coach Michael Bibbs. Michael Bibbs was born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri. He has devoted his life to God in true worship, and his desire is to motivate, inspire, and to arouse the body of Christ. He is married to his beautiful wife, Candace, and together they have three wonderful children. They enjoy spending quality time together and working as a team. Michael accepted the Adventist message through his uncle, John Taylor, and he accepted, and he accepted the message the first time he heard it. This has been one of the best decisions that has changed his life. He is a faithful member of Agape Seventh-day Adventist Church in St. Louis, and currently serves as the men's ministry leader. Michael serves in the roles as assistant treasurer and presenter for Bible Discovery Center. He is a certified professor, oh, I'm sorry, certified personal professional trainer and nutritional specialist. Throughout his community, he helps to promote the health message. His ministerial purpose is to give spiritual insight through Bible study and to live a faith experience that will bring forth a new way of life. He possesses a men's ministerial heart filled with compassion, empathy, wisdom, understanding, and Christ-like love eagerly desiring to visit and pray with and for God's people. Michael is committed to being a person of prayer and a servant leader to the community and his home first, as well as his church home. Bow your heads with me as I pray for our instructor before he begins with his lesson. God, new home for us. Dear most gracious and kind Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the privilege of being on this Zoom meeting this evening to learn about this new home you have for us. We pray for Instructor Bibbs that you would speak through him to us, that we will hear clearly what you're saying to us from him. We will receive it and believe it, and we will look forward to it. It's good news that he plans to share. May we receive it as such. In your son Jesus' name, we thank and praise you. Amen. 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 Good evening, everyone. Happy Sabbath. We are Happy on Sabbath. lesson. Happy Sabbath. We are on lesson 15. And I hope you all are excited about this. Uh, our new home. Uh, God's future home for me. This is the title. God's future home for me. Um, let's dive right into this thing. Lesson number 15. I'm going to start off with uh, question number one. And our question number one is asking us something. And it goes like this. As believers, where should our focus be? As believers, where should our focus be? And we're looking at the Bible text, Hebrews 11.10. And the scripture says this. For he waited for the city, which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Let's look at a couple of answers. And I want you all to choose between the three. Which one is the correct answer? And when you choose the correct answer, put it inside of the chat. 
and then we're going to find out which one is pertaining to this Bible text. What answer have you all come on with? So here are the answers. On the city that God has built for us, on enjoying all we can for, for this life, God expects us to occupy until he comes. That means creating and enjoying wealth. Which one have you chosen? A. Someone says A. As believers, what should our focus be? On that city that God has built for us. <laughs> Some, someone might have gotten uh, answer C. They feel that God expects us to occupy until he comes. That means creating and enjoying some good money. <laughs> Someone wants to have a good time, enjoy some, some good wealth and creating a good bank account. But the answer is A, on that city that God has built for us. A will be the correct answer. Let's look at question number two. What should be our main joy in the new earth? John 14, three. What should be our main joy in the new earth? Let's look at what this text says. Like a reader? Mm-hmm. It's a St. John chapter 14 and verse three, according to the New King James Version says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Well, will our main joy be in the new earth? John 14, three. Here are three answers. Let's look at them. And our options are A, seeing our loved ones again, B, exploring different worlds, C, spending time with Jesus. Let's see what else instructor, instructor Michael, we have a consensus according to John chapter 14, verse 3. The answer is option C, spending time with Jesus. Yes. That is the correct answer. Spending time with Jesus. Let's look at question number three. What parental figure is Jesus compared to? Isaiah 54, 5. Let's fill in the missing words on this one. Isaiah 54, 5, the New King James Version. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole world. Let's look at the, the missing words on this. For your maker. Husband. Instructor Bibbs, the answer for the blank spot is husband. For your maker is your husband. Amen. That is the correct answer. Let's go to our question number four. 
what is the new Jerusalem compared to? Revelation 21, 2. Again, we're going to fill in the missing words on this one. Revelation 21, 2, the New King James Version. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, come down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Let's fill in the blank words. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a what? A dawn for her husband. A bride. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. Instructor Bibbs, we have a consensus according to Revelation 21 2. The answer is bride. Amen. And that is the correct answer. Let's look at question number five. What is Jesus longing to do to his beloved? Hosea 2, 19 and 20. Hosea 2, 19 and 20. I will re betroth you to me forever. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice in loving kindness and mercy. What is Jesus longing to do with his, with, to, to his beloved? Here are the three. Make her one of his special creation. Make her his wife forever. Watch to see if she'll remain faithful. Instructor Bibbs, we have a consensus. According to Hosea chapter 2, verses 19 and 20, the answer is option B, make her his wife forever. You know, when you um, marry someone, it's till death do you part. You want to make that person your spouse forever. In this instance of forever, Jesus means that throughout all eternity. Amen. 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 Let's look at number six. What great feasts are the saints called to do? Called to. Revelation 19, 7 through 9. Let's look at this. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. And to her, it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the lamb. And he said to me, these are the true sayings of God. Amen. With what feast are the saints called to do? Here are the three answers. Choose. The great supper, the Lord's supper, marriage supper of the Lamb. Which one is it? Instructor Bibbs, we have a consensus. According to Revelation 19, verses 7 through 9, the answer is option C, the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. And that is correct. The marriage supper of the Lamb. Moving on to question number seven. What has God restored in the new earth? Revelation 22, 1 and 2. And he showed me 
a pure river of water of life, clear right. as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its streets and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits. Each tree yielded its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were from were for the healing of the nations. Amen. Boy, has God be stored in the new earth. The tree of life, the tree of good and evil, seven rivers. Which one is it? Hey, before you get that consensus, I want to ask this question. Um, let's go back to that text real quick. Looking at verse two, in the middle of its streets and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Why do you all think that God has had to restore the tree of life? Before we choose that answer. The tree of life gives us eternal life and to heal our soul. Okay. Anyone else? I believe while well, we will have incorruptible bodies, um, it seems as if God uses the tree of life to restore us to that former place where Adam was before he fell and maybe even to uh, 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 an even more elevated, better um, place um, even. So that seemed to be one of the purposes of the Tree of Life. Do you think there was anything different um, about the Tree of Life that had to be restored than what it was from the beginning of time? I believe God is going to make everything better. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of make you think, right? Yeah. So, so when you look at, I the think it was because Eve. Uh, I don't, I'm just saying this. I'm not know that for sure. Mm -hmm. When Eve, not that her hands were evil or anything like that, he had to be stored because it wasn't what it was when she taken or taking the fruit. I don't know. You all remember the two thieves on the cross? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there, there was there was one that was he made mockery to tell Jesus, man, you saved all these people, man, and you can't even save yourself. But then the other thief on the cross said to Jesus, Remember me, Lord. And Jesus responded to him and he says, Today you will be with me in paradise. And I looked up that word paradise in the Greek. And guess what that word meant? Take a guess. Peace. Where was the tree of life located? In the middle in, of the garden. In the middle of the garden of Eden. In Eden, right? Yes. That word paradise in the Greek term meant Eden. So think wow. of this. Jesus says, today you will be with me in paradise. It was almost as if when the thief was talking to Jesus saying, remember him, he was eating from the tree of life right there at that moment. He was able to experience a new birth, a new healing, even though he was suffering. Because Jesus says, today you're going to be with me. He didn't mean, he meant that, okay, when you get to the new earth, you're going to experience this too. But it's going to be more of a meaning to you because right now you're in the eating in Eden. That word paradise, go and look it up. It meant Eden. 
So Jesus was the 12 manner of fruits that yielded up fruit that this individual who was next to him dying ate from. My, oh my, what an experience mm. it had to be for this brother to say, Lord, remember me. And Jesus said, today you will be eating from the tree of life in paradise right now at this very moment. But ultimately, when I get you up from the grave, I'm going to resurrect you and I'm going to bring you to the same point and you will be able to, to literally do it just as you did when you suffered with. That's a blessing, y'all. That's a blessing. Yeah. Amen. Let's, Amen. let's get the answer. I Thank mean, like, right, so we got we got the answer on this thing now. Let's go to the answer. <laughs> the answer is what? Uh, Instructor Bibbs, the consensus for Revelation 22, 1 and 2 is A, option A. a. Yeah, there it is. The tree of life, y'all. Oh, eat, eat from that tree right now. That man mm -hmm. is Jesus. Question I was kind of I was kind of on the right track, huh? Oh yeah, you was headed. In. <laughs> yeah. You was in the right track. No, okay. Let's look at question eight. What is what is life like in the city? Revelation twenty two three through five, Isaiah sixty five twenty one four. Drag the words into the correct boxes. Let's look at this. Do we have a reader on this? Yes, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, for they shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. Five, there shall be no light there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light and they shall reign forever and ever. Stop right there for a minute, my sister. Scroll back up. Uh, this is a very important text, you all. Notice in this earth that God created, we have the sun, moon, and the stars. In the new heaven and the new earth, it says, verse five, there shall be no night there. So we don't have to worry about dark time anymore. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Jesus will be the light. Can you imagine that? Just, just allow your imagination to run wild in this text for a moment and, and, and really vividly put yourself in that new heaven and new earth where there will never be any nighttime anymore. You mean to tell me no more darkness? Jesus will be the ultimate sunlight in this new world that he is going to make and fashion for us here down on earth? That's a blessing, y'all. That means, that, you know, people don't sleep. You go to sleep at nighttime. That means we won't be able to go to sleep because we're going to have so much fun because it'll never get dark. Again. They ain't not going to want to sleep. <laughs> You're not gonna want to. <laughs> That's a blessing. We don't want, some of us don't want to anyway. Not have to. Man, look, some of us get our paycheck and that check be so big, man. You be ready to go shopping there. You don't have. You don't want to go to sleep. You driving around the city trying to do everything you possibly could do when you couldn't do it. But in this scenario, case it's gonna be different because you already had your mansion. You already had angels flying you everywhere you need to go. You have every other vacant galaxy out there, but the blessing is you have Jesus in a place where there will never be any more darkness. Light will come past his arm. My oh my, man. May, let this be some encouraging to y'all, man. Get excited now, because once y'all get there, you, <laughs> this thing going to be on another level. Let's look at Isaiah 65, 21 yeah. through 24. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 65, 21 through 24 says, they shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people. And my elite 
shall long enjoy the work of their hands. 23, they shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth children or for trouble, for they shall be the descendants of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. 24, it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. Hey, scroll up just a little bit to the beginning of that text. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. Man, where will it be, y'all, to, to own your own house and pay no taxes on that thing? No mortgage? Hallelujah. The, like, like you're the founder and the builder of your own home. If y'all, I, I read this in Ellen White writing somewhere. It says she owned five pieces of land and she owned it all. She had her own orchard. She could walk in her own orchard and pick fruit from her own trees. They had on the news right before, I think in the midst of COVID, the schools burned down where her house was. All of the regions around her home burned down, but her house was still standing. Yes, and they have rebuilt it. She too. owned all of her properties here on earth. So it's going to be a double blessing to get to the heavenly kingdom and build your own home and inherit it and not have to pay nobody for it because it belongs to you. Amen. That's a blessing, y'all. Like, how quick should we be letting people know, like, yo, you suffering to pay all of this money to these individuals here on this earth, and it's taking you through all of these distresses and stress and pain and agonies. Why don't we rush people to get to a place where they can build a home and not have to pay for it? Like, that's a stress reliever right there. Like, no, but to believe and to know that we serve a God that is going to, that has a place prepared for us to do these type of things. This is on a whole nother scale, y'all. Hallelujah. And, and to God be the glory. Let's look at the answer on this. What is life like in the city? Drag the words into the correct boxes. It will put me. And there shall be no more blank. And there shall be no blank there. It goes right here. Sorry. Okay, I might have to do it a little differently. Yeah. So maybe you can tell where the word go as I grab it. So face. That's the verse with this one. Uh, that goes in. Right there. Amen. Here. Okay. Is that there anywhere? Some of them might it's not at be the there. bottom. That goes at the bottom. Yeah. And I will, I still call. The, before they call, I will. I will hear. Right there. Yeah, I, I will hear. hear. No. No, up there. I, I will hear. It goes right there. Yeah, it goes there too. Yeah. It goes right there. I will answer. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Hi. Okay, see the rest of them. Okay, yeah, those are right. Paul goes in that one, right? Yeah, there you yeah, go. Before they call. There we go. Praise now the other ones go up. Yes. That's a revelation. Very first one. That's the very first one. There you yeah. go. There, there we go. go. Mm -hmm. Now we got the two. Oh, All right. What was in that last piece? 
Uh, you got the last two. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. Right there. One more. Amen. Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. There it is. And of the Lamb shall there shall be, be no more him. curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads, and there shall be no night there, and they need no candle neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat for as the days of a tree are the days of my people. And, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain nor bring forth trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And I, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Amen. Amen. Question number nine, what will God wipe out of the new earth? Drag the words into the correct boxes. Revelation 21, four, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There Amen. shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. Amen. Amen. And God shall wipe away all what? Tears. Tears. From their eyes. And there shall be no more what? Crying. 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 Neither sorrow. sorrow. Nor pain. pain. But that one should be death. Yeah, there should death. be death. Yeah. Death. Yeah. yeah. Then no more sorrow. Death and neither. No more sorrow. Sorrow first. Neither sorrow. Yeah. Nor crying. crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. pain. Amen. For the Amen. things are passed okay. away. Yes. David said it best in Psalms. He said, Lord, thou knowest all of my wonderings. He says, Thou puttest all my tears into a bottle, for are they not in your book? God has a book of remembrance that holds our tears, that holds the pain of the death of our loved ones, that holds our sorrow. And every, every moment that we cry, he bottles that thing up in his book of remembrance. So when we go over those books in that thousand year millennium, we will have a full understanding of why God is wiping all of these things away and what great joy that will be when that day comes. Amen. Let's look at number 10. What is God's ultimate purpose in preparing a place for his people? Revelation 21.3. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Amen. Yes. Let's look at the answer on this. What is God's ultimate purpose in preparing a place for his people? Revelation 21, 3. What is that? Choose from the three. Okay, that's what A says. God desires to dwell with his people and be their God. B, God A. wants people to work for him. C, 
he needs to fill the vacancy left because of the angels who fell. <laughs> Instructor Bill, um, we have a consensus. And according yeah. to Revelation 21 3, the option chosen is A. God desires Amen. to dwell with his people and be yeah. their God. Yes, Amen. yes, yes, yes. That is the correct answer. Question 11. <laughs> Are you looking forward to residing in your new city? Yes. Yeah, I am. Yes. I am. Yes. But you know, yeah, we can't yeah. get to that city until we can get some individuals who we may uh, be bumping heads with. Stars, you gotta have stars. You cannot go without stars. Can't be, we can't get into that city unless, you know, we gotta take somebody with us. Amen. So get Amen. ready. Stars on your crown. Yep. That wraps up the end of this lesson. Uh, we are now going to transition to the next portion of uh, our evening study. And go from there. Okay, thank you, Instructor Bibbs. Um, what a presentation, um, food uh, for thought, and also um, lets us know that God is God is preparing a place for us, for, for Him, and when He comes back for His people, He is planning to take us home with Him. And I think that's something that should resonate in our minds and our hearts um, this evening. So right now we are going to um, go to our break rooms uh, for further study and questions. And I'm going to turn it over to um, Coach Elder Christie um, to give us further instructions for that. Amen, amen. I don't know about you, but that's exciting um study exciting news i have a home prepared for me and i'm making it personal that's one that's prepared personally for me and i'm excited about um that and i'm excited about um all that we'll be able to enjoy throughout eternity especially having christ with us forever Right, so our breakout room is open we just have one breakout room that we'll be doing this afternoon and so we ask that the uh, our instructor remain with us in the breakout in the main room here, and um, our uh, host and co-host, and we invite everyone else to go and fellowship and to discuss um, in the discussion room. And so the room is open. If you just um, go ahead and hit join breakout room, um, you'll be able to do so. We invite and encourage everyone to, to join in that discussion there. For those who are tuning in online, um, we also invite you to participate by putting your, your thoughts, your um, reactions in the chat, and we'll check them periodically and, um, and hear your, your feedback um, as well. Better yet, go to BibleDiscoveryCenter.com and join using the yellow button or the orange button on the home page. If anyone needs help, get into your breakout room, please let me know. Again, we're encouraging everyone. Um, I need help. Oh, that's Coach Juanita. Co that's Coach, Coach, Coach Bonita. Bonita, yes, yes. Right, um, there you go. I'm all ready to dance. All right. Um, do you need help getting there as well, Coach um, Harris? Uh-huh. All right. How about you, Coach Catherine? Yeah. All right, and um, Brother Aaron.
Uh, Coach Phyllis would like to join the breakout room as well. All right, and uh, we have um, Coach um, Kelly with us this afternoon as well. Good to have you, Coach Kelly. Kelly. Good afternoon, Coach Kelly. Or break or two miss. Or break or two miss. Open it. Hello, like everyone. Break or two. Hey, how are you doing, Coach Kelly? I'm doing pretty good. Amen, amen. Glad to have you. Excited to have you this afternoon. Um, would you prefer to stay here with us in the main room or would you like to join? We have just one breakout room um, today. Would you like to join that breakout room or do you prefer to stay with us here? I can stay here. Oh, okay. All right. So um, with that said, um, turn it back over to our host and co-host, um, Coach Vivian and um, Coach Juanita. Okay, um, thank you. Um, first of all, I want to just thank um, Instructor Bibbs for a um, awesome lesson um, that you shared with us today, that you presented with us today. And um, you brought out some very um, key points um, in the lesson. And so um, I don't even know where to begin, <laughs> but um, one of the things um, that really um, stood out for me, well, there are many texts, but uh, one of them was um, the one with Isaiah, and I believe it was 65, um, I think it was 21 to 24. And, you know, to know that um, when God comes for his people, um, he's preparing a place for us right now. And when he comes back, you know, everyone will have their own homes, their own vine yards, their own um, place, and no one can come take it from them. Um, no one can put them off that land. And it's just a refreshing to know that um, God is preparing a place so that his people, his children, can live with him throughout eternity and to live in peace and to reign with him, to be with him, and to know that God will be there um, with us and for us, and that we can live throughout eternity of peace, joy, love, and happiness. And I would just love to hear um, what um, takeaways each of you um, receive from this lesson today, or what comments or points you would like to bring out today? Well, um, as, as I listen this afternoon, the point that uh, really got my attention was that Christ will be our light. And I'm thinking about that. Um, that's that's really amazing because the sun, we don't have to wonder where the sun is, at least um, while it's in our side of the, the world. We know where the sun is because it, it just, it, 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 it's light, it's brilliance um, overshadows everything else. You know, you look up and you just know, oh, the sun is there and wherever you go, it's light is just radiating. Um, around you. And I can just imagine being in such a, a presence. And yet still, he will be personal and close to us. I can't imagine how that works. How do you have a light so brilliant? <laughs> and yet you're talking face to face with that light. You're going to embrace that light. Now that blows my imagination. I can't even begin to imagine what that looks like. But I just know it's going to be awesome. However, that um, that is is just yeah. going to be awesome. The, the text brought out that our roles were the light of His righteousness. 
Mm. So it's almost, it's the same with Adam and Eve. This is how Adam was able to speak with God face to face and not die because he, one, he was in a perfect state when he was created. But that light that was surrounding him was an ultimate reflection of God's character. Mm. So he was literally created and embedded with that surrounding him. His very presence was the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And that's why, I don't know, I couldn't bring, I didn't bring that point out, but it says our robes are the light of his righteousness. Meaning that we are, we were for all, throughout all eternity. The, the, here's the key point. We are to have those robes on right now. That's why we're practicing taking back that image of God. He's recreating mm -hmm. himself back into us. So it says, the day is coming where the sun, the, the, the darkness will be no more, but the sun will shine bright. So think, if God has given us a probationary period of when the sun is going to shine bright, some men are going to run away from it. But then there's going to be a selective group that's going to look just like him that's going to gravitate to that because they've already been living in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so is is and this is why it's important day by day to to keep that garment spotless, man. Them crimson stains that have them made white as snow, you know, uh, because that's our reflection of Christ's character. Mm. We're wearing it. Put on Christ, mm -hmm. as the words tells us. We're to put on righteousness. Mm -hmm. So true. So true. Oh. Um. I, I did have I, a, a, another question. If a question yes, as well. <laughs> um. So just looking at um. The, there was a, a passage, a text that you quoted, um. In the babes, and I was just um curious about it because um somehow i understood it a bit um differently um where he says to the christ says to the um the thief on the cross um i say unto you and the king james version um says i say unto you today you shall be with me in paradise um but i always understood um that the the punctuations were added um, later on, um, mm -hmm. and so just get your thoughts on it, and and, and so the the correct punctuation of this um, passage should be, uh, I say unto you today. In other words, this is something I'm telling um, you today, that yeah. you will be with me in paradise, um, a future time, and and in addition to that, like um, the fact that Christ didn't go to paradise that day, as we 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 learn. Um, he hasn't gone to his father after three days. So just um, kind of getting some um, some thoughts on that. So 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 think of it fig so figuratively. That's gonna happen in the future. Ultimately, he's gonna be able to eat from the tree of life. Yeah. But Revelation lets us know that Jesus Christ Himself is the tree of life. Mm. He is the healing of the nations. He is the restorer. So when he says paradise, the correct term in the Greek language that it was spoken in meant Eden. So it was, it's almost as Christ is saying, okay, you've had enough understanding to see me literally and to ask me to remember you. Why don't you just share this moment in paradise with me right now? Mm. Not saying he went to heaven. We know he right. didn't go to heaven. Mm -hmm. We're not saying that. We're saying that this moment of paradise, what think what other greater privilege could you share with Christ but to die next to him? Next to him. That's paradise. Mm -hmm. That's like the great man. Listen, me going into heaven knowing I was crucified next to him, like that's an honor, dude. In my eyes, mm -hmm. like that's paradise for me. <laughs> wow. I died next to the man. Like I, I mean, he didn't die that day because they broke his legs and took him down. But you were able to get a glimpse of suffering with the man mm. himself. That's paradise, man. Yes. That's eating. Mm. Like I'm eating from, I'm literally eating from the man's words. That His words were fruit to mm. his soul, man. 
Wow. He said, today you get to share this suffering with me, Amen. my brother. Amen. Wow. Enter into my paradise, man. Wow. And, and just, just to think, you have that assurance directly from the most. Oh, right. that, that's, that's awesome. That's man, awesome right look, that, this, this, that's why this lesson is so powerful. And I'm sitting here and I'm reading this thing and I'm like, hold on, God. You mean to tell me this brother got an opportunity to literally suffer with you? It's one thing that me and you go through our daily sufferings. We get a glimpse of our daily trials and tribulations. But to literally be nailed to the cross next to the man himself, that's on another level. Mm. Wow. That's dude, deep. I, I mean, dude, if, if I had that opportunity, you know, even though it was because of my own self-infliction, that's one thing. But to acknowledge that and say, Lord, please remember me. Mm -hmm. He utters back to me, matter of fact, share this garden of Eden experience with me. Eat from this tree now. You're going to be with me in paradise right now and when we get there. That's a double portion. Amen. Amen. That's a win win. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when you read Book Fox's Christian Mortars, it says Andrew and the disciples. It says when they saw the cross, they said this was the moment that we've been waiting for to die like Jesus. Mm. That's paradise. That should be like the greatest paradise experience. You and I. It says we are we are sheep getting ready for the slaughter, y'all. Mm -hmm. If we alive when the time of trouble kicks in, we should be preparing. This is our mentality as Christians: getting ready to die for Christ. Mm -hmm. That should be your mentality. Mm -hmm. What day? I don't know what day is going to be, but let me get ready today, because <laughs> mm -hmm. that's your moment to share paradise with Him. And then ultimately to go into the heavenly kingdom and say, look, Lord, I know you got them scars in your hands, but I love you so much that I, I, I had to lay my life down too, man, for you. Mm. For exchange ain't no robbery, y'all. Oh, like when you dwell on a new city, it's deeper than what we actually, when I read it, I'm not reading it as the normal man will read it. I'm reading it as if I'm literally finna make this happen. Because it's going to happen. I'm anticipating it. Wow, uh, man. It's a blessing, y'all. Yeah. Yes, it and is. when you when your imagination just runs wild, it says when we get to the tree of life, you will see Adam. Read this in, 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 in uh, Ellen White's writing, The Truth About Angels. It says, Adam will be at the tree of life, and you will be in the same stature that you're in now. And once we start eating the healing and the leaves and the healing crop, you start growing back to your normal state. Mm. Angels will be bringing babies back to moms and dads. And these kids will be able to eat from eat that fruit and be able to grow back to their original state. Man. This man, look, we ain't seen nothing yet, y'all. <laughs> Get it? Hey, look, when you tell somebody about this new home, mean it from the heart. Like tell them, give them details. Like, bro, I don't think you understand what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about heaven, I'm talking about a place that's real. I'm not giving you something that's fiction. May I ask you a question when you were saying that they would be big? Are you talking about the size of the giants we would be and our rich rear would grow tall? Like, it, like said, it said Adam Adam was somewhere 15, 14 feet. Yeah, he was somewhere to his shoulders. Think, 12. a rhinoceros weights a, a ton. Man, man had to Man, knowing them were carrying golfer wood to build yeah. the ark. They were huge. Right. Think yeah, the, the they Bible went on text, little, yeah. The, the Bible text that we read, it mentioned that that it was very specific on how we would be able to build and inhabit our own homes. Meaning, meaning the full capacity of strength would be restored to us. Our regular, this ain't our normal weight capacity. This is not our normal structure. Sin has diminished us. Yeah. Yeah. So we're look, y'all, we're not done growing yet. Like this is why we we don't even know it all. Like we got 66 books. We still scratching the surface. Yeah. And, but but think 
It says the lifespan of the righteous will be as a tree. You can go and look at trees that's been around for, th- for years, right? When your mom, mom was a yeah, grandparents, great grandparents. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, back, back from the breakout to room, and so turn it back over to our host and co-host. Okay. Um. What a what a deep discussion we had here in the main room, and I'm interested in learning what um happened in the uh, breakout room in Central. So I'm going to. Uh, turn it over to one of the coaches there and to find out um, what happened in the breakout room. What were the key takeaways um, that you guys um, shared today or would like to share with us in the main room today? Well, we talked about, um, we talked about how, how we, we have to, we have to pay our way here. <laughs> we have to we have to pay our way. And if we're not paying our way one way, we're paying it in another way. Um, and oftentimes it's it's a whole lot that we have to pay mm-hmm. uh, from what we get out of it. So we went down a list of that and uh, we 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 just we um, we touched bases about about we can't imagine, we can keep trying to imagine and we can be encouraged over and over and over again about in our imaginations about what it's gonna really be like. And I love listening to everybody's takeaway on that because some things I had never thought of. Mm -hmm. I had never, you know, we just don't think of, I I, I know uh, sickness and health and, um, but mortgage and rent and, Gosh, yes. Paying bills, paying exactly. bills. Yes. Yeah. We 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 talked you. about that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yes. those um within itself, um, the daily stresses of life, just trying to maintain and to um keep what you have um worked for, and then to think how God has, is preparing a place uh, for his people where you get the chance to build your own house and have your own vineyard yard and no one else can come and take it away from you. And it won't be um, the strains and stresses of life here on earth. It'll be totally different um, in heaven. And sometimes it's hard to even um, want to say imagine what it will be like because being here on earth, we 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 can relate, but to just picture that in our heads is just sometimes it's really um, it's really hard to even even to imagine. But to to know that there will be a better life. Um, for us in heaven is something to be to give God praise and to look forward to and how we have to um, really what's the word I want to say excited but not only excited but look forward to um, that joy that 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 day when we see our king and to be able to live with God throughout eternity and not have to worry about those things um, that we are dealing with today on this earth. Um, it's sometimes it's difficult for me to even wrap my head around um, some of the things that I've um, that we talked about today um, um, through our lesson. So um, I just um, I want to thank you for sharing that, and if anyone else have anything that they'd like to to share um for a few minutes before we go in to our um next uh, part of our of our lesson um today i would love to just hear um any other um key points or anything that people 
um, got out of the lesson today that they would like to share um, right now. This is Coach K. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. It was an awesome uh, presentation. Thank you very much, Instructor Bill. You know, as I was listening to that lesson, um, we talked about having God, our future home, right? And it, we say heaven, but where's our home now? On earth. earth. Okay. So where's our future home? It will be on earth. Exactly. <laughs> so the exciting part about this, though we're going back to God a thousand years, in the at that process, and, and as you talked about those books being opened and the tears and what's written there, the book of remembrance, once we leave heaven, God's home, and he come and restore the earth. So the question I'll ask you all to think about, you know where you live now, where would you like to live when we come back to earth? What part of the earth? That's something to think about. Because we're going to be able to build those homes, not in the heavenly realm, but on this earth. Our mansions is in the heavenly realm. And that's the beauty. That's the beauty of it. Amen. It, I said, the meek shall inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. This is our inheritance. He's going to give it, he's going to give it back to humankind. Amen. But the key is, the key is, is that we have to step and believe on Jesus Christ, the Lord, our righteousness. Do. Accept it, believe it, and then do something else. Share it, share it. Like I heard that saying, being said in the lesson. But can you imagine, like you said, you paying rent here. But when we come back to this earth, rent free, rent free. However, we get to enjoy Christ. We would be his bride. We're going to be awesome. So I thank you all for the lesson. I see way for it. And up and so, um, Coach Vivian, we got uh, Ray Ford named Hannah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Go ahead, um, Coach. And Aaron's Coach. hand is up as well. He put it down, though. Okay. So we have Coach Ford and then um, and Aaron. Okay. The floor, the floor is open. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes. A beautiful lesson, and I I really enjoyed all the. I'm blessed by the comments and. Um, um, you know, I just wanted to um, to reference um, Second Peter, Second Peter chapter three verse eleven. Second Peter chapter three verse eleven, where the uh, the apostle writes, "Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, mm -hmm. what manner of persons ought we to be in all holy conversation and godliness?" So, um, so that 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 just helps me to to understand that, um, you know, wh while we are going through all the, the 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 all the stuff we're going through here, we 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 know that all these things will be dissolved. We know that um, this you know this will not last forever. But as we think about that, we also know that eternal life is with us right now. It is already given to us, and so. And so we, we um, while we are going through this this uh, this work of life, while we are going through the paying of bills and the and the other issues we are going through, we want to reflect to others that we already have eternal life right now. We are, we, we are basking in God's goodness. We are walking in grace. We are, we are enjoying the benefits of eternal life right now, and we are showing to the world because remember we are epistles. Uh, written by God to be read um, uh, to be read by man. So we, we 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 are all going through stuff, but we want to be sure that that heaven is now here with us, even 
that we are showing to others, even in the midst of it all, that we are walking in heavenly places with Christ. We, we are dwelling with him there. We, 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 are, not, we are not like the others. We, we, we are not being pulled down. We are not being, uh, uh, we are not falling apart under the pressures of life, but we are walking we are walking with Christ in heavenly places. We, we, we have to show others that, that our perspective is different. You see, people have to see a difference in us that, that, that yes, I have bills. Yes, we, we have all these things going on, but it is not pulling me down. I, I'm not waiting till I get to heaven and in the new earth to enjoy these things. I'm enjoying it right now in Christ. You see, and people have to see that because that is that perspective is what is what lets people desire what we have. You see, and so while while we walk through this valley, let us keep our eyes stayed on Christ. Let Christ be seen in us. Christ is attractive. Christ takes care of us in the midst of our wars, in the midst of our trials, our, our problems, in the midst of everything we go through. He gives grace sufficient, and people need to see that. Yes, even when we lose loved ones, and some of us have lost loved ones recently, people need to see that our hope is built on nothing less, that Christ is our goal, that we, we do not mourn as ones without hope. People want to see a different picture in us than they see in the rest of the world. And when people see, see Christ in us, they find him attractive. He, 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 he is altogether lovely. He is drawing, he is pulling. And even now, people could begin to enjoy that which awaits us. Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Aaron. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Vivian, hey, and, hey. And, and keep in mind, you all, the Bible lets us know through the Lord's Prayer that these things should be done on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> This yeah. that's how that's how close heaven is on mm -hmm. earth, you know. So we have angels down here with us. We have God. God is with us all through this place, y'all. You know, uh, otherwise we wouldn't be sitting here on this line. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So true. Okay, I think Aaron had his hand up. Did he? Did he want to say anything? Before we move move forward with our program, yeah, I think Elder Gary was on saying something as well. Okay, is he is Aaron still there? I see okay. his, I see him there. Okay, Brother Let's Aaron. Morning, to unmute. Okay. Um, go I'm ahead. sorry. Hello. What's... You can hear us, so it's doing me off. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um, let's... I think he's unmuted now. Okay. Yeah, praise the Lord. I don't know what's going on. Every time I touch the screen, you keep on clicking on. Yes. As the brother was saying, we have to be in right now. We're in Christ right now, but we know we're fighting a war down here. Everybody will believe in Jesus, Jesus. You know, other people out there giving them a hard fight. It's not like, it's not, no, it's been a long time while the Jesus' children getting a hard fight. So we still have to stay on the right track. Don't give up. Just believe in him, same way. When you get out of the Bible study this evening, don't just say, oh, yes, yeah, put the Bible down and don't think about it him anymore. You still have to think about him, same way. Like when he was on the study and so that's the only way we can make our way out to the Father. Because even when we say we can't see the Father without you, but you're the Son. So we are got to believe in Jesus right now. And this new earth, what's going to be long here? I was just thinking about when I was asking a question about it. 
where you're going to live will be part. I, I, I can, you don't go him alone now, but we don't know if we got no more stop sign or anything the same way. But I'm going to God, God know what, what we're going to have. As a blessing for this evening to end this, this story. Because every evening I come on, every Saturday evening I come on, you learn more and more. I a blessing to hear from God's children. That's again, I can learn more and more. So that's what I'm saying. We are thankful for God bless me all. Thank you so much for sharing. Man. Okay. Do you okay? How about we will go to um coach Catherine Phillips for our final song? And then um when she's finished, we're gonna give the floor to um Oda Garrett um uh, for final words. Okay. Is that okay? I think that's uh Coach Bibbs. Coach Bibbs, yeah. Oh, okay. All right, Coach Ben. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful discussion about what God is doing for us. So I'm just going to sing the hymn. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion, bright and blessed, he's preparing us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that would be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory while we tread this pilgrim's pathway. Clouds will overspread the sky, but when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we all Get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that would be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. So let us then be true and faithful, trusting and serving every day just one glimpse of him in glory will the souls of life repay when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that would be when we all Jesus will sing and shout the victory when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that would be when we all see Jesus will sing. La 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 la. We shall thank you, Jesus, the maiden. We'll sing and shout the victory. We'll sing and shout the victory. Amen. Amen. Let us, let us pray. Amen. Uh, kind, of, kind of loving Father, what it is truly a blessing that 
we can sing when we get into our new home. But Father, what great it is of victory that we can sing and triumph because we have that victory now in Jesus. I just pray, Father, that you would allow us to continue to be encouraged in you and your word. And that as you strengthen us to go forth in our weakness, that you will be perfect and your grace will continue to be sufficient. That it will give us a, a enduring power to go through all that we have to go through, that we can ultimately sing the victory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' almighty and precious name, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, um, Instructor Bibbs, for the beautiful presentation. I want to thank our um, our guests, our friends, um, everyone that joined us today um, for taking time out of your your busy schedule to be with us at Bible Discovery Center. And we just want to thank each of you for uh, being a part of our this our spring season. Um, this is our final. A lesson um, for our for the spring season, and we just pray that each of you and all those that are listening um, have been blessed by the lessons these past fifteen weeks. And I just pray that you continue to study um, the word, uh, spend time in God's word, and spend time with with Jesus each and every day, and pray for the Holy Spirit to guide you and to lead you each and every day. And don't forget to uh, join, uh, register at Bible Discovery Center. Uh, there is Hope um, Bible Studies, where you can continue to study and to learn more about Jesus and about his soon coming. Um, with that, I would like to turn it over to um, Elder Christie right now. Amen. Thank you very much, Coach Vivian. I just want to thank everyone for just all you do to make this another tremendous season, um, one in which um, we did things a little differently, as we have been doing um, year after year, um, season after season. And um, in this particular season, our coaches um, and um, team members have been the, the presenters, instructors, and we have been focusing more on the lessons um, directly and what a blessing it has been, how much we have seen um, God using our coaches and instructors. And I just want to ask you to give, um, give them a, a round of um, encouragement, a thank you, just an amen for just the great work that they have done in both preparing and presenting these lessons. They are the reaction buttons there. Um, just um, show them some love and just let them know that you appreciate um, what they have done. I'm just thanking God for what he is doing. And we're just looking for greater things that God will do through Bible Discovery Center, through our team members here. We appreciate you. We appreciate everyone that comes on um to serve in different ways um, the songs the prayers um the um coaches the breakout rooms um all of those things that, that help out with the technology we greatly appreciate couldn't have done it without all of you um coach k working tirelessly behind the scene we appreciate um all that you do and um the board of directors for the bab discovery center we're just so thankful for each one of you and we're just looking for greater things as we move forward. God bless you all. Remember, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please, this is a good opportunity to go there to um, subscribe and to share the videos. And so just go Bible Discovery Center on YouTube and do subscribe. And there'll be a lot more coming um, your way. So stay tuned and looking forward to another great season um, in the fall. God bless you. Man, thank you, thank you. So much. Uh, thank you, as Mary has just said. Um, 
thank everyone. I want to give a special shout out and thank you to um, our board of directors, past and, and present. Uh, we want to give a great thank you to When We Pray Ministries and Lydia Ministries for uh, co-hosting with us here at Bible Discovery Center this season. It was a, it is a blessing to be able to call out, collaborate with uh, like believers in Christ Jesus. I would like all the coaches, those who uh, presented for the very first time, and those who had some experience but made it uh, got more experience as they had to prepare for uh, Bible discovery to present. We want to thank the Lord for all our coaches, and we uh, I'm, I'm ever grateful that we have coach uh, Kelly on the line who has been uh, faithfully praying for us. We haven't seen much of her, but we just like to thank God that she is on the line at this time with us. I have some exciting news for you all that we want you to know that there are by local Bible centers coming your way, coming your way. We have a challenge for at Bible Discovery for our coaches to set up local Bible um, community schools in your area. And if you would like to see Bible Discovery centers in your area, we're going to encourage you to talk to your ministerial director, your conference, Talk to the uh, ministerial director of your um, of your union. Talk to the um, your personal ministry director. Speak to your pastor, and we're going to encourage you to ask them to ask for the proposal packet that we have to know more about how to have a local. Bible Discovery Community Center in your area. It's super exciting. And you see it's in your area, but it will go around the globe. We are currently in many states, as you can look at our Bible instructors' names, it tells you that they're EDC and that they are from different parts of the United States. However, we do have a, a study going on in Pakistan. We want you to pray for that. And when you decide that you want to study with someone, encourage them to go to BibleDiscoveryCenter.com. There is hope lessons. Is the hope people are looking for. Just say about the hope of, of our future uh, home with God, but yet our future earth. That's exciting. And this is what we do here that God has hope for them in many different areas. So if you want to see a local community Bible study presented by every centers, give contact us. Coach Wanda Shirley, you can get all the information. A contact the person that invited you to join Bible Discovery Center today or any other day. May God bless and keep us. And when all is said and done, the word is Maranatha. Jesus is coming. Let us continue to be his witnesses to spread the good news of there is hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, so thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, those that are have tuned in online. And um, we encourage you to stay tuned. Go to BibleDiscoveryCenter.com and register if you haven't yet done so, so that you can be updated with things that are going on here. All right, um, for now, it's um, hasta luego. Um, goodbye, adios, until we meet again. God bless you all.